Are you superstitious? Maybe even a little stitious? Concerned about the voices in your head? It could be schizophrenia, but it's probably the changeling. Welcome to Total War Warhammer 3, and in this video I'll be exploring the new Shadows of Change DLC and what it has to offer. This expansion adds three new characters to play. We have Chinese Salaryman, every Eastern European lady past 35, and that weird kid that sits at the back of the class. For our purposes today, we will be playing the changeling, because uh, I can relate. Will we be able to carve out a place and rule the school, or will we be called a nerd and thrown back into a locker? Now, before the video begins, and before you write that comment, yes, I am aware of the situation, and without breaking the flow of the video too much, my take is in the description. So, let us begin. Now I scoured the pits of Reddit to try and find out what a changeling is, and I couldn't find an answer beyond he was just created, which is surprising because Reddit has an answer to everything. So right here, I'm gonna make some lore for the changeling. This is John Changeling, a normal boy in the empire who liked to pull pranks. Man, I wonder. Wait, he's German. Man, he's fragmic. Where much who denied his right spin soul? Until he got the bright idea to prank the big man upstairs. Well, one of the four of them. Zinch, upon hearing this, said, I like the cut of this boy's jib. I'm gonna make him blue and change form and stuff. And so he was no longer John Changeling, and just the Changeling, reaping havoc among the world so he can get a chance to prank the big boy Zinch himself. So, eager to get this show on the road, we begin in Sterland. Welcome to how the changeling plays. Very simply, the tactic is to move up reasonably close and then pelt them to death with blue Gatorade. Then later on down the line, you can upgrade to pink Gatorade instead. How exquisite. Using the strategy of dousing our enemies in gamer juice, I very quickly dispose of our first threat. And now we can get a good look around. We have Germans itching to do what Germans do. Bulgarians ready to steal my catalytic converter. And I'd say we're surrounded by solid company. But how do we make money? Glad you asked. And your answer is through cults. When taking a settlement, we cannot outright claim it, but instead we install one of two types of cults in the settlement. The funny cult or the funnier cult. The funny cult or symbiotic cult does what it says on the box and provides a variety of buffs to the settlement and in exchange, their success is our success. And the funnier parasitic cult, which does exactly what it sounds like. Because our cultists are performing forbidden rituals, like reciting shitty pop songs, the world around them begins to deteriorate with corruption. And the owners, having to sit through 24-7 Wonderwall, aren't too pleased. Now we begin the main gameplay loop. Declare war on dumb idiots, raid one of their settlements, and establish a trickster cult. Now I can operate in the shadows, as my cult will harbor me in enemy territory, making it very hard for them to deport me from their lands. Along with directly attacking a settlement to set up a cult, I can also build a structure in each settlement that gives a 4% chance of expanding into another settlement every turn, effectively creating an exponential web to my benefit. But this all seems kind of lame. All you do is fight, Boring. Well, a feature of the changeling is his various schemes that he is able to perform, which mainly boil down to just messing with the people around him and give you anything from buffs to your empire and your troops to, oh, I don't know, nuclear warheads. Once I prank one too many people, they provide me an ample opportunity to mess with the most amount of people possible in a grand scheme. These battles have actual consequences and are pretty cool. Complete five of these and I get the chance to do the ultimate scheme, a prank that'll make Zinch himself blush, but I'll get to that later. For now, I must focus on something very key to my success, and that is my battles. Now, like every other legendary lord, a very important part of this game is our conquests. Some of you might have noticed around 30 turns have happened throughout this time, so you might be wondering what the hell I've been doing, and the answer is battle. I had made friends with the Bulgarians and told them to steal someone else's Toyota Hilux. Meanwhile, the Germans are very cranking at me. I wonder why. The Russians are being beaten to death by a bunch of rat men, and quite frankly, I want to be rid of this area. But to do this, I need to complete another minor scheme before the grand scheme is available. So I go and pay Festus a visit. Now with both of us being chaos, you'd think Festus would be my friend, and God knows he tried. Numerous times. However, his defeat brings with it a cool plus 10 casual replenishment to all my armies. 
Damn, that's rough. So we, uh, do the funny. And this is where we start to snowball, as through my various capers, both the grand scheme of the Norska and the Empire Theatre open at the same turn. So after sending the changeling back to our main province and rejigging my army, I turn to fight the Norskans. Welcome to the Norskan battle, where our goal is to scare the crack addled Scandinavians into attacking someone else by kicking their shit in not once, not twice, but three times. And when they're basically using sticks and stones versus my pink translucent gamer juice, who do you think won that fight? As a reward for our victory, we have a choice to make. Send the crackheads to Cathay or send them to Ulthuan. Considering that the Chinese had a bit of a rat problem at the moment, I thought it a bit too unnecessary to add to their suffering. So I send the Norskans over to the land of the elves to do a little trolling. But that's not all because welcome to the empire. Now the empire has these provinces that like this dude needs to confederate yada yada, I don't care. But what I do care about is infighting and truth be told, these guys don't really like each other too much. So as they attend a summit to talk about issues in the area, they're talking about me. I decide to pay them a visit and make it out like it was all a setup orchestrated by the big man himself. The hardest part of this battle was honestly just not killing them. What a waste. And with this, the entire empire falls into civil war. Not like it matters anyway, because they're this close to dying to either vampires, demons, or the north. But you know what's not close to dying? These stupid segues into shills. So, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment telling me what you want the changeling to do to you. I mean, he has three hands for a reason. <laughs> what that mouth do? Also, I now have a Discord. Link in the description. If you want to join me in my misery, join it, or I'll change into your mother and get the belt. After defeating the Empire, the game turned from what was a leisurely stroll into a full-on sprint. For example, I get to send three trickster cultists into the Darklands and to cement my grasp over the area. At this point, I have had a secondary army being a nuisance to Cathay for a good while now. I am fielding two pretty good armies and sending them at the hippies and the French. I have also sent another cultist down to say hi to Cetra, and we'll get back to him later. And then finally, we send the changeling to Ulthuan to get Get it out of the way. All this in about five turns. The web connections between the cults result in the majority of my turns starting like this, needing to macro the hell out of every new settlement I've taken over. I'm really suffering from success over here. The elves didn't exactly like me being on Virgin Island and tried to boot me off. Sucks to be them, however, as I continued my plundering and pillaging of various settlements across the island until a certain someone tried to come and put an end to me. Can you take a guess how that went? Exactly as you'd expect. While we were here, we also grabbed a special settlement, that being the Shrine of Cain, so we can get a little gift later on down the line. But I don't want to get ahead of myself, as yet again, my antics have caught up to me, as throughout my conquest of land, I have been able to force them into their grand scheme, as well as the elves. Wonderful. I first begin with the elves because quite simply, this battle was a slaughter. My entire goal is to keep these sus fellas alive as the elves get antsy. Once the very quick ritual is over, a bunch of Slaneshi forces charge at the elves and tear their bussies up. With that, the battle was over. And the consequence? A bunch of chaos armies popping up and causing problems. But wait, we have another battle. And the Chinese are pissed. What? what? The main objective of this battle is to tear down that wall. But how can I? I'm just a poor, supple changeling that needs to be held and loved. And... Oh, oh wait, here's the rats. The rats are cool, as they like to drop nukes. However, the Chinese are not messing around and really like annoying me with their units. But the fight is won, and the northern wall is torn down, giving Cathay yet even more problems to deal with on top of the rats. Let's now go see what the Wood Elves are up to, since it's a bit closer to home. And, oh, they're getting minced. I'm able to send my armies up the Bretonian lands with near full immunity, claiming various settlements along the way, as I send my other army down to Skavenblight to claim my warheads. The Bretonian battle is just as bad as you'd expect when I'm up against literal peasant armies, until finally the big boy himself, the Green Knight, comes out to play, and almost immediately gets decked in all this mess. This battle allows yet another vampire empire to come out of the woodworks and cause some trouble. During this time, I sent the changeling down to Camry, and just look at this place absolute paradise. Now I have a few errands to tick off the list. Claim a settlement? Done. Scarbrand? 
dead and face taken. And at this point, Cetro was not too pleased in my being here, so I decided to kick him whilst he was already down and sack a bunch of his settlements, opening a door for the grand scheme. Welcome to the grand scheme. The battle is against the Tomb Kings, a vast army of skelly men and a lot of scary units. Time to get to work. We first need to keep some summoners alive so this necromancer can't keep summoning more units into the fray. And once that's done, we douse him in Gatorade, killing him, which causes his entire army to dissolve like paper. Now one may wonder what kind of antics we can do with the Tomb Kings. Can we summon undead armies in vast away lands? Do we get even more regeneration to our troops? Nah, we just take an entire pyramid and place it somewhere else. And of course, it causes problems. And where else would we put it other than our next target, Lustria? Before we send the Lizardmen back to their holes, a couple things. Remember that settlement I took back in Ulthuan? Well, after building a structure that summoned a big chaos army into the world, I got the option to pick up the Sword of Cain. And of course, I took it. Look at those buffs. At this time also, my schemes in the Darklands bore fruit, and now it was time for a revolution. Leading my armies with the Sword of Cain, I launch into the battle, but as shown in my previous Warhammer video, the Chaos Dwarves are still very powerful, and actually put up a lot more of a challenge than I thought. But alas, not enough. And now various armies of uppity greenskins rise in revolt against their masters. Meanwhile, they still have relatively high relations with me for some reason. Now on to the bungle in the jungle. A quick gist of the schemes in the area. They all suck. They're either too far apart or too unreliable to do in a decent amount of time. So I spent a lot more time here than I really wanted to. I began by slaughtering various tribes of lizard people on my quest up north to do battle against Mazamundi, simply because I wanted that beautiful face. But these battles also built towards another scheme. After defeating Mazamundi, I continued to hunt the lizard men to extinction until I unlocked their scheme. The main goal of this battle is to claim a relic from the lizard men. Without it, they become really sad. And to just piss them off even more, I'm going to give the relic to the rats. And now onto the final theater, Nagaroth, which I kind of forgot existed. And it seems like the devs did too, because all the schemes here also suck. After taking three settlements, I had to either take one more and wait 12 turns or kill some dark elves. And with three armies in Nagaroth and two more to come, you best believe what option I went with. Now the Dark Elf scheme, keeping in line with the devs being lazy, has actually no goal other than just to kill the Dark Elves. After a while, there is something interesting actually happening as I get jumped from behind. Sucks for them, however, because I like it from behind. Uh. And with that, Nagaroth is ours, and our reward is a rinky-dink army that we don't need to pay upkeep for. Nice. But we're not done, because I haven't got the most important item yet, and that's the Trickster's Staff. Yeah. I've had this quest since like turn 15 and kind of just forgot about it. Now for this fight, we just get to kill dwarves and that's pretty much it. Overall, this mission is just a grand old time where we get to take our frustration out on some midgets until one of the midgets gets a bright idea and flees to tell the others that we are actually not the good guys. No way, I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> and with that win, I'm finally able to activate the ultimate scheme. Welcome to the Ultimate Scheme, where the only objective is to survive. Thanks to our efforts in doing every theater on the map, we are only fighting against three groups, that being the Empire, Kislev, and the Dwarves. Meanwhile, they're fighting against literally everyone else. After we kick the Empire to the curb and send them running, the other Empires finally decide to show up. The Dwarves with their flying machines, and whatever the hell this is, and Kislev and their bears. Both of which go down without too much of a fight, and with all the Lords dead or scattered, that's a long campaign victory achieved. This entire world taken over, all worshipping the Lord of Change, with God's greatest trickster having performed his greatest pranks. 